What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here to bring you yet another hot controversy. You see anecdotes all over the place from Home Barista to Reddit to different manufacturers chiming in, as well as baristas across the world who have set their espresso machines to a certain bar and they feel convicted that what they did was correct or was better or showcase their coffee a bit more. Don't worry about this part, I'm gonna let. It's very easy to be want to be drawn into these new trends that seem cool or have sound logic behind it or have a big movement that's propelling it forward. I know that six bar shots got quite famous, I guess you could say, after the Turbo Shop paper a few years ago, which I did a video two or three years ago. So I wanted to really look into it and see if there was something more than just confirmation bias or flawed perception or hype that might surround something. Does it make lighter roasted coffees taste better? Is it more consistent? Does it do something very different to your recipe, to the way you should grind your coffee? Is the end result really any different than a nine bar shot? I called my buddy Rui, who helps me with a lot of my testing. Uh, he's the Portuguese national barista champion. Good palate, good coffee skills, brought him over and we did a lot of shot pulling, a lot of refracting, and a vomitable amount of tasting. Of course, before we go into it, I have all of the raw data down below in the caption on a web page for anyone to access. Feel free to go check it out. You can run it through your own charts, blah, 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 blah. But that's what we're gonna be looking at today. I did three different coffees. They were all lightly roasted from my friends Laukemist up in Bordeaux, France. They graciously donated this coffee for testing purposes, so we used the three different coffees that they gave us. One of them was the Natural Ethiopia Carraro. One of them was a washed Colombia, the Leona Tabi, and the last was a washed Ethiopia Alaka. So we used these, we dialed them in, and we did some blind taste tests. The way I set this up was not with any intent of debunking completely the claims that some people make or of proving the claims that people make because this is nowhere near enough sensory participants, but I do think it's a pretty solid experiment that I can present to you the conclusions of, which should maybe give you a little bit of a head scratcher. I would take my Linea Mini R, which has a nice little screw on top where I can switch easily between nine bar and six bar of pump pressure and I used a Coffeetech monolith with the SSW burrs because I don't want to worry about heat up times with a cheaper grinder so that I don't have to worry about duty cycles and things like that to skew shots. So we took each coffee and we tasted them independently. The first one we did was the Natural Ethiopia Carraro. Dialed it in at nine bar. I did 20 grams in a 20 gram BST basket, 50 grams out, and I did that in about 27-ish seconds. Huli would take the measurement, the extraction yield, etc. as I quickly switched it to six bar and pulled another shot. I wanted as little time as possible between shots. I got down to where I could turn the screw to six bar almost without having to use uh, the pressure gauge. We would oscillate it though in order to ensure as much randomization as possible. So I did nine bar, then six bar. And then I had the next round of taste tests, we did six bar, then nine bar. And I did not want a temperature offset in the taste test because that is gonna be a dead giveaway for which one is which. So I took my Fluke thermometer with Thermaprobe on it, I shoved it into both of them, and I ensured that I had equalized temperature. Now the way to get that is I did some extra stirring in one of them to allow the heat to dissipate. I would also stir the other, which would obviously lose some heat, but it's because I wanted to oxidate it as well so that they had at least similar levels of oxidation between the two. And I figured that was a smaller difference between the two than obviously being able to tell which one is hotter. I got it within 0.5 centigrade of each other, usually around 52 degrees Celsius when we were doing our taste tests and then we would do our tasting. We were looking for acidity, we were looking for finish, for texture, uh, sweetness, and we would notate what those different things were for each cup. And then at the end, we would count to three and we would point at the one that we preferred. Of course, we had which one we preferred on paper so that we were independently writing away from each other so there was no bias instilled from one to the other. 
With the natural Corrado, which is the first one we tested, the results were interesting and is also a bit of proof as to why I tend to never use naturals when I do testing. You can have one shot pull at 22, the next at 27, and you could do the same puck prep. It can be very erratic and the extraction yields can be all over the place and the taste can be kind of wild. That's why I usually use higher quality like washed Columbia's or something like that that tend to be easier on the extraction, that tend to be very uniform, and that don't really have much differentiation between the cups. They don't have any potential really uh, defects like Quakers and things like that that are nearly as prevalent as they are in natural Ethiopia coffees. Two of them we did choose differently, but overall it was completely random. The six bar was a bit faster than the nine bar, but I would not read too far into that again because this is only five shots. You have a lot of fines production with Ethiopia's, so there may have been less fines migration in the six bar shot because there's less agitation during that ramp up, but that's just speculative. That's what La Marzocco tends to say happens with six bar. That's what some people have said, but I don't even know if that's necessarily true. There's no proof that fines migration is somehow more affected at nine bar than six. It could be at a threshold at four bar. We don't don't really know. There is texture differences, but those seem to be more from not perfectly uniform extractions. There was no real correlation between the results and anything to be done with the pressures. So then we move on to the next round of tasting, which we did the washed Columbia. They pulled beautifully, they looked identical, and it was very difficult to tell the difference on paper between the two different shots. They both pulled at the same times with a very tiny p-value. With the Ethiopia Alaka, just for fun, I did a much faster shot, something I would typically prefer when I'm pulling my espressos. I did 22 seconds. Now that's not crazy fast, but that's pretty fast for a 50 gram output, especially at six grams a second flow rate. And this time, again, the shots were very consistent between 21 and 23 seconds or so, whether it was six bar or nine bar. The extraction yields, again, very similar. The TDSs, again, very similar. Nothing significantly different. You could have just imagined they were all the same pressure shots. But every time, Huli and I, again, were perfectly calibrated and we chose the nine bar shot over the six bar shot. After the first three tastings, we could straight up say, this is the nine bar, this is the six bar, based off of the attributes the nine bar was giving us. I think the biggest difference between those two shots is the simple fact I was doing such a fast extraction, meaning the puck integrity or the resistance potential of the puck was much lower than in the other shots where I had to grind finer to make it longer extractions. So with this one, we had a coarser grind size. We had the water flowing through a little bit more readily. The resistance let up a lot more quickly. And so you had a faster pressure drop. And so it seems that it wasn't necessarily the pressure causing the big differences in the cup, but the resistance, the waning puck resistance and the correlating flow rate going through the puck. So it seems more so that the first two shots were essentially staying at their static pressure throughout the whole extraction. We had ground finely enough to allow the same flow rate through the puck regardless of the pressure. So the pressure could have been six, could have been seven, could have been eight, could have been nine, and that flow rate's not being affected. The pressure doesn't have enough of an effect, it would seem, to change the flow rate through that puck. Maybe at 12 bar, it could have forced the water through at a quicker flow rate, but I don't know, I didn't test that. Now when the puck resistance is lower, it does seem to have an effect, the pressure does, but it's less about the pressure and more about the pressure drop. Whenever you have a puck that is on the cuspis of losing its resistance, that pressure can affect the porosity of it and the flow of the water through. Now this is definitely speculation, but there has to be a reason why we chose 100% the same cup five times in a row on that washed alaka. And because it peaked at that nine bar, I think it quickly was dropping some of that pressure and allowing a quickening flow rate through the puck as it tries to maintain the pressure, but it simply can't. Whereas with the six bar, because six bar of pressure is not de potentially deteriorating it as quickly, because we are obviously at this cusp of deterioration where pressure could do something to it, it is gonna hold that six bar longer than the nine could hold nine. So the nine's dropping as that six is staying pretty static. Now, now again, that's just a theory as to why the six bar had a rougher texture and had a worse finish, which is what we consistently noted on all five, but it is something to consider. 
So it does seem like pressure, at least in the six to nine bar area, is a red herring if you're pulling more traditional styles of shots. And even when you're doing something outside of that, it has less to do with the pressure and more to do with the flow rate going through. The pressure being applied at nine bar, it's not necessarily the pressure that's deteriorating the puck, but the quickening flow rate being forced through the puck in order to maintain the nine bar. The flow rate coming through at the six bar is likely going to be a bit lower, but more consistent as it's going through its shot. You're never gonna get six milliliters a second out of the La Marzocco that it has the six mils water debit when there's a puck in there. And then as we see, we hit that nine bar and the output flow rate is going to- And it seems to vary. I've done tests on my Bianca with this where I'll open it to what I've measured at three mils a second water debit. And on some coffees, it'll get up to 2.5 mils a second. On others, it'll only hit one millisecond even if I run it for like 10 hours. And I think some of that's from the inherent puck integrity. So maybe the inherent puck integrity wasn't allowing a higher flow rate even though it was still trying with the higher pressure to go through, which could have arguably messed with the resistance of the puck. It could have allowed for a, a more gentle application, or I don't know, we're just speculating. It's gonna let us maintain close to nine bar for the duration, however long I wanna run it. The fill rate of the puck and the initial part of it has a big play on the final cup, and then the pressure drop seems to have a big play on the final cup. I don't think we should take these results and apply them outside of this, for instance, on a spring lever. There are completely different dynamics at play there. This is trying to maintain nine or six bar, whatever I have it set at. Whereas a spring, when it's fully compressed, can do whatever the stated pressure is, assuming you have sucked all the air out. So it will peak at a pressure, but then immediately it will start losing pressure regardless of your grind size. Obviously it'll lose it a lot quicker with a coarser grind size than a really fine grind size. But in the end, it's going to be losing pressure, even if the flow rate is static or even completely choked, it will lose some pressure as long as there are drips coming out allowing the pressure to release and it would require a full different set of testing in order to do that unless I bought a second Argos into a six bar spring in one and an eight bar spring in the other but even that is not as good of a difference as six to nine which is what my preference would be anyway for a nice testing to get a bigger range and to have direct comparison to this data but this seems to be further evidence that flow and its relation to resistance, which does make up pressure, is much more important than the pressure at the puck. So if you're pulling shots at home and you're worried that, oh, my Breville dual boiler says it's 9.7 bar, but stock says it'll be at nine, it's probably not gonna taste any different, my friend. If you have a machine that's, oh, it's, it's only at seven bar, well, that may be fine. I did do a fourth coffee. I did not do five shots of. I physically was not able to. It was a commercial coffee that was a very dark roasted blend, and it's because I wanted to throw something into the mix that wasn't light medium, like the one from Laukemist. Tasted it, the two times were different, the extractions were different, but what can you expect from a probably a 47,000 bean blend? I don't know. Chloe and I both preferred the nine bar over the six bar. But as I was tasting it, I wanted to sit on my palate, to feel the weight, to feel the texture, swash it around a bit, let it aerate in my mouth. On that second taste test, um, I literally gagged up the second shot I tasted, and it was not a fake gag. I was not being a drama queen, even though <laughs> I normally am. I just Googled six first nine bar and I saw like 15 differing opinions, all claiming they had scientific backing. Not a single one of them showed any type of testing or methodology or anything beyond, we tasted this, we tasted this, this was different. And in fact, in some of them where they said they had a lot of tasters, they admitted to dialing them in differently. Hello, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Of course, if you dial one in differently, it's gonna taste different. Maybe you dialed it in better. Be careful with what you read online, and even with mine, take it with a grain of salt. I did three sets of five, so I guess 10 overall with each, so 30. Even though we're both good tasters, myself and Hui, the, the, this, uh, this champion who actually had one of the highest scores at the World Championships first round in, in Melbourne, you know, we can be wrong. I'm not saying throw away your six bar spring if you got one for the Gaja. I'm not saying stop pulling six bar shots at your shop if that's what you're pulling. I'm not saying that at all. Thank you for watching this far. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the work that I do and some of this testing and being able to afford Rui to come and pull a thousand shots with me, 
I would really appreciate it if you hit the Patreon down below, check that out, maybe consider joining. We have a cool, robust Discord that goes along with it. We also do competitions for all the equipment I buy using the Patreon funds in order to um, yeah, get you a little something, something that you can play with at home. I also have my Instagram, my Facebook, my second YouTube channel, and a lot of other links down below to check out. And of course, it would be really helpful if you hit the like and the subscribe if you haven't already. I assume if you watch this far, you're probably someone already hitting like, but in case someone falls through the weeds, please do that. Let's converse down below.